Elon Musk does not believe in hydrogen fuel cars, as you may have seen in videos or on Twitter, which many of you have definitely seen. I don't want to turn this into a debate on hydrogen fuel cells, because I, I just think that they're extremely silly. Um... Because of course, there's a lot of talk about hydrogen. Do you think that will take over? No, yet? hydrogen is stupid. Electric powered vehicles are produced by Elon Musk. And when compared to a vehicle powered by an IC engine, the carbon footprint of an EV is essentially non-existent. But just a portion of this truth is accurate. Because just 20% of all electricity in the US is produced utilizing renewable resources. If I were to talk about the nation where Elon Musk got his start, many people think that hydrogen will be the preferred fuel in the future. Green hydrogen is future fuel. Hai. और हिंदुस्तान ग्रीन हाइड्रोजन को एक्सपोर्ट करने वाली वर्ल्ड की पहले नंबर की ताकत होगी। With such aspirations for green hydrogen, Sri Nitin Gadkari is not alone. In the early 2000s, companies like Toyota, Honda, and Hyundai began to develop vehicles powered by hydrogen fuel cells. Even some cars are accessible through their portfolios. If I talk too much about Toyota, then Toyota made a nearly one billion dollars investment in the research and development of hydrogen vehicles. What happened, though? Toyota's Mirai, the world's most popular hydrogen-powered vehicle is this one. Toyota has only sold 18,000 of these vehicles since 2014. It is an absurdly small amount. We'll thus make an effort to comprehend through this video. Why do big, successful companies like Toyota produce cars powered by hydrogen fuel that are indifferent to people? Why does Elon Musk believe that those who consider hydrogen are foolish? We'd also make an effort to understand. How much is Sri Nitin Gadkari correct, and how much is Elon Musk incorrect? Gases containing hydrogen are very combustible. And as many of you may recall how this horrible gas caused a plane like the Hindenburg to crash, killing many people in the process. Hydrogen is the most prevalent element in the cosmos. But after that, we reach Earth. Only 0.1% of the hydrogen at this location is pure. Even after the extremely limited supply of pure hydrogen but there are other ways to remove hydrogen. You should be aware that water is composed of two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom, just like in the case of water. And as a result, hydrogen may be drawn out of water. There are a number of additional ways to extract hydrogen. But we'll talk about them more in the video. Before that, we should comprehend how can a car be propelled by hydrogen gas? We should discuss Toyota in order to comprehend that. The fact that Toyota lost a lot of money to make this possible global manufacturers were searching for alternative energy sources that may be used as a source of energy for vehicles in the early 1990s. At the time, there was not much buzz about global warming. The reality that fossil fuel powered vehicles cannot go extinct anytime soon was also known to the world's automakers. However, the day came. Global automakers were planning in advance because of this. Nobody at the time was interested in lithium-ion batteries the way we are today. Nobody considered using lithium-ion batteries to power automobiles. Since at the time lithium-ion batteries were quite ineffective. Additionally, no work was done on developing batteries in the future. Toyota made the decision to invest in hydrogen fuel cell technology for this reason. Hydrogen hydrogen is converted into energy using fuel cells. Electric motors are supplied with the generated electricity. Then the cars start to move. If I were to attempt to concisely explain the fundamental operation of a hydrogen fuel cell to you, it would consist of an electrolyte membrane, an anode, a cathode, and a suitable catalyst. Hydrogen gas at extreme pressure is pumped into the anode. Additionally, oxygen gas is pumped into the cathode. Hydrogen is contained within the anode. Unable to pass through the electrolyte membrane because hydrogen is a neutral atom and electrolytes make it easier for positive ions to get through, containing a proton and an electron. Appropriate catalyst is employed to jumpstart the energy generation process even more. A catalyst separates the hydrogen gas electron and proton. The electrolyte then allows these protons to go toward the cathode. Electrons stay in the anode due to their negative charge. Because of this, a conductive wire links the anode and cathode. This wire allows electrons to move across it. The electric current that powers the vehicle's motor is the movement of electrons across the wire. Water is the byproduct of this process, which is H20. This indicates that automobiles powered by hydrogen fuel cells emit no carbon dioxide. When seen in this way, the process appears to be simpler. And for this reason, the HFCV, the first hydrogen fuel cell vehicle, was released in 1966. However, there was no real-world application for this vehicle. It took more than 20 years for a company like Toyota to release its first hydrogen fuel cell vehicle because operating any vehicle on hydrogen is far more challenging than anticipated. 
The Toyota Mirai, Toyota's first hydrogen fuel cell vehicle, made its premiere in 2014. When it first debuted, the Toyota Mirai was regarded as the most cutting-edge vehicle available. An electric vehicle has far fewer parts than a car with an internal combustion engine. Consequently, EVs are regarded as being less complex. A hydrogen fuel cell vehicle, however, is more complex than any other kind of car if we take a look at Mirai, which is an HFCV. But Toyota did an amazing job with this HFCV. Toyota's Mirai has some benefits that electric cars lack that are readily apparent. The initial one is known as no range anxiety. Every vehicle, including those powered by IC engines, may quickly have its tanks filled with hydrogen. In EVs, this is not possible. Additionally, the Toyota Mirai's tank may be charged once for a distance of up to 600 km. And to further extend the hydrogen fuel cell vehicle's range as with electric vehicles, there is no need to expand the number of battery cells. Vehicles powered by hydrogen fuel cells remain lightweight as a result. Because of all these benefits, hydrogen fuel cell cars the Toyota Mirai was not very successful. Toyota has only sold 18,000 units of the Mirai since its launch. If we compare the sales of the Toyota Mirai to any Tesla EV model, the monthly sales of any Tesla vehicle are greater than the lifetime sales of the Toyota Mirai. You must ask yourself a question. If HFCV technology has such benefits so why do hydrogen cars not succeed? The practical challenges brought up by the hydrogen fuel cell car hold the key to the answer. In the UK, there are over 35,000 EV charging points. Additionally, there are just 15 hydrogen fuel cell pumps in the entire United Kingdom. And the hydrogen gas that is now on the market is very expensive. For instance, green hydrogen costs between 400 Indian rupees and 600 Indian rupees per kilogram in the US. Consequently, a hydrogen fuel cell vehicle's average running cost is 10 times more than an electric vehicle's. In addition to the typical cost of operating a gasoline-powered car, due to the fact that it is green hydrogen, this hydrogen is very pricey. The amount of pure hydrogen in our surroundings is essentially non-existent, as I already mentioned. As a result, we must use a variety of techniques to remove the hydrogen. The extraction of hydrogen involves numerous steps and resources. Different colors are used to indicate each type of hydrogen extraction procedure. And the result is known as a hydrogen rainbow, when all the various colors are mixed. When coal or other fossil fuels are burned, black hydrogen is produced, if we try to understand this hydrogen rainbow. Large-scale carbon emissions result from this. Methane gas is used to produce gray hydrogen. Steam reforming of methane and a lot of carbon emissions are produced by this process. Methane gas can also be used to produce blue hydrogen. 50% of the carbon emissions are however trapped here. Green hydrogen is the final color in the hydrogen spectrum. No hazardous carbon emissions are produced with this extraction procedure. Green hydrogen is water-based hydrogen. Utilizing the electrolysis method in this procedure, water is passed through an electric current. As a result, the hydrogen and oxygen atoms split from one another. After that, hydrogen fuel cell vehicles can consume this hydrogen. And numerous further applications. After listening, it looks to be quite fascinating. But there is a significant problem with this green hydrogen. Shouldn't the electricity used to make the hydrogen following the electrolysis process come from renewable sources? Such as wind and solar energy. Hydrogen will never be environmentally friendly if we continue to utilize coal-fired electricity. Furthermore, there would be no distinction between grey hydrogen and green hydrogen in this scenario. Grey hydrogen is also five times less expensive than green hydrogen. The major issue with green hydrogen is that only a tiny part of the world's total electricity is produced by renewable resources. Assuming that all future electricity would be produced from renewable resources, however, there is a significant problem with green hydrogen-powered cars. Battery electric cars are therefore superior to all HFCVs. And there's the question of how inefficient hydrogen vehicles are. If you closely study these graphs, you'll notice that the efficiency of such vehicles is only about 33% when we use hydrogen produced from renewable resources in our cars. If we look at any battery electric vehicle's efficiency, it is 77% which surpasses any car powered by an ICE engine. The reason for HFCV's low efficiency is it feasible to create hydrogen using electricity? The produced hydrogen is then transferred in a variety of methods. Additionally, when this hydrogen gas is fed into the tanks of the vehicles, it is again turned into electricity, requiring additional energy consumption. The motors of every vehicle are propelled by this power. In the motors, some energy is also lost as heat. The motors of battery electric cars, however, are powered directly by electricity. Elon Musk holds hydrogen in low regard as a result. However, it is not at all the case that hydrogen gas is not advantageous for powering automobiles. 
If so, it is wholly useless. It is highly advantageous to deploy hydrogen fuel cell technology in buses, vehicles, and ships. Long distances can be covered using hydrogen gas. So without further ado, start charging your car. And if we only consider trucks, the required charging time for such battery pack would also be very long because a truck's battery pack must be much larger than a car's. Additionally, lithium-ion batteries add heft to any vehicle. But this issue can also be resolved with hydrogen gas. The usage of hydrogen in aircraft will become increasingly important in the future. The availability of electric aircraft in the near future is not guaranteed. However, Airbus has declared that it will launch hydrogen-powered aircraft by 2035. Due to its high energy density, hydrogen is preferred in aeroplanes over batteries. These facts were some of them. Elon Musk views hydrogen as a foolish gas as a result. On the other hand, Sri Nitin Gadkari aspires to establish India as a leader in the world of green hydrogen generation. Because of this, major firms like the Adani Group have begun to move toward green hydrogen. In addition to electrolysis, Sri Nitin Gadkari favors the creation of hydrogen from bio-waste and sewage water. In this case, hydrogen gas would be created through a chemical process. Thanks for watching like, share and subscribe.